Time to feed the trolls. If I'm going to hell, I'm taking you with me. Hey guys, it's me, and you know what that means? It's time to feed the trolls. Now, I'm sorry for my long hiatus. Um, you know, shit happens. So, without further interruption, James the Preacher, or James the Pleasant Preacher, or Mr. Pleasant Preacher, or as he's referred to right now, exposing the cults. My name is James the Preacher, and I'm here to expose St. Francis of Assisi. About time someone exposed him for what he really was. A robot from the year 2137 sent back in time to start the hippie revolution 700 years early. Damn you, future hippies! This is called, are you ready, St. Francis of Assisi comes out of the closet and goes in to the fire. Wow, that's, that's a really funny name. I'm laughing inside, honest. St. Francis of Assisi comes out of the closet and goes in to the fire. Doesn't he look so cute? Uh, if by cute you mean dead looking and holding a bloated pigeon, then, uh, yeah, he's pretty cute. He never got converted to Jesus Christ. Any form of a gospel that he ever heard, as far as is recorded, is the false Roman Catholic doctrine of salvation that is about works and has nothing to do with the biblical gospel of salvation by grace through faith Romans 4 5 Romans 5 1 Ephesians chapter 2 8 9 Romans chapter 11 verse 6 Colossians chapter 1 verse slow down damn it there's never a conversion cited with Saint Francis of Assisi Aha, I, I see what you did there with his name sissy <laughs> Clever. You're a clever little man. You'll also find that what he records as being the gospel uh, and what he records as his message to be out and be sent to go out and preach to the poor and so forth is from Matthew chapter 10, 7 through 19. And what you find is that this message was written to the apostles uh, and the, those in that time of the gospels that has no bearing, it's not a gospel message, it's not even a message of how God's people today ought to be sent out to preach. You're right, Christians today don't need to go out and help the poor and volunteer their time to good causes. No, the modern Christian, by James's experience, has better things to do. God forbid any of them actually, you know, help people. What the modern Christian ought to do is buy into James's bullshit and help spread divisiveness wherever they go. Because if there's one thing in this world that helps spread the gospel message, it's people like James the Preacher. Number two, we find that he is involved in the occult. What you find is that there were times where he would have dreams. One example is dreams of Christ telling him to serve the master rather than man. Oh, yeah. Because that sounds like something Satan would say. God does not deal through dreams in that way anymore as he did in the Old Testament. That's actually pretty debatable and depends on what philosophy you are interpreting the Bible through. Ah, wait, I forgot. Your way is the correct way because you're James the Preacher and know everything. There's uh, another time he was kneeling in the church of San Damiano and he heard a voice. And he said it was God, he said it was God, he assumed it was God, and he believed it to be coming from the crucifix. That is occultism. That's right, James, so why don't you gather all the crosses in your house and burn them in that barrel of yours? Can't be too careful. I mean, Satan could speak through them. And yet the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it says, hath in these life. In fact, verse 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. See, he doesn't speak through that uh, dreams uh, like he used to. He doesn't speak through crucifixes. It is nothing but occultism. As a matter of fact, you know what else we ought to throw in that barrel, James? The camera. Because Satan could speak through that camera. It's occultism, James, and you know it. Do what needs to be done. Burn your camera! Number three, you'll find that he was a thief. <laughs> Stealing from his father's warehouse, even though he was trying to do good, he was a thief. 
Yes, James, he did. He stole some cloth from his father's warehouse to sell to get money to help repair a beaten down church so the poor would have somewhere to go. Four, you'll find at one point that Francesco stripped naked in front of the Assisi Cathedral. Notice I say Assisi. In front of the Assisi Cathedral, he stripped naked. How, how typical of Roman Catholics. Yes, it's a very common practice for Catholics to just take off all their clothes. I had one on my property the other day. He saw me just throw off all his clothes. Those silly Catholics. You'll also find that he preached to the birds. Now, that's a very unusual thing. You'll find in the Bible where uh, there were bones being uh, preached to, but that's uh, a totally different thing. Here he is preaching to the birds. I wonder if he thought the birds could be converted. Francis preached to animals out of his respect for all living things, James. He also believed that the environment was something that needed to be protected and loved. But you and I both know that ain't the case, don't we, James? God didn't want us to respect the earth. God wants us to piss all over it. And that ties in with our next point, our sixth point, is that he was nothing more than an unsaved occultic New Age weirdo. Whereas you, James, are a fundamentalist, bucktooth, back words hillbilly moron who beats his wife and probably his kids too. Why would he preach to the birds? In, in his writing of the Canticle of Brother Son, uh, it's not S-O-N, like the Lord Jesus Christ, it's S-U-N, uh, the sun that comes out as the greater light during the day. He says, praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son, S-U-N, who is the day and through whom you give us light. And he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor and bears a likeness of you, Most High One. You know, James, from the sound of it, this guy who lived in the 12th century was a million times smarter than you. Praised be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon. It's weirdo New Age ungodliness. James, do you even fucking know the definition of New Age? It means new age! And the stars in heaven you form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my lord, through brother wind. <laughs> it's nothing more than occultism and new age wickedness. And through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my lord, through sister water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my lord, through brother fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my lord, through our sister mother earth, who sustains and governs us, who produces varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. You know what that is? It's garbage, St. Francis. Urgh, all these beautiful flowers and clouds and suns and amazing vistas and waterfalls. Oh, it's all garbage. New Agey devil worshipping garbage. Ugh. All these grasses and pretty animals and rare sights and celestial wonders. Oh, it's all Satan. It's all horrible, horrible Satan. St. Francis, he's going to come out of the closet and go into the fire. That's where he ended up. Uh, St. Francis, listen, he's the, he's the saint to all the animals, the patron saint to the animals. Uh, listen, he was an unsaved, unregenerate man who followed Roman Catholic doctrine, and you do not go to heaven by doing good deeds and by feeding the poor and by helping those that are poverty-stricken. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. He never got converted. He never got saved. He died a Roman Catholic man, and he went to hell. Actually, according to Francis himself, he was a sinful youth until he found God. Then he abandoned a life of wealth and luxury to help those less fortunate. Clearly, this man went to hell. So here we have St. Francis of Assisi coming out of the closet. He's been exposed for what he truly is. And now we'll find out what happened to him. <laughs> he goes into the fire. Ah, oh, St. Francis comes out of the closet and into the fire. Ah, ah. I thought I was saved. I thought I was such a good man. I thought I did many wonderful works. And I'm in it now, right now. 
St. Francis, here I am, the wonderful St. Francis. People revere me and they respect me and here I am. I came out of the closet. I was uh, dragged out of the closet. I was exposed and now I am in hell. I take it back. You're not a troll. No. You're a fucking psychopath. I mean, talk about kicking a man when he's dead. Seeing as how it rained recently, I can't exactly burn you an effigy, but I can do something else. It's time for something I like to call James the Preacher out of the butter and into the frying pan. All right, everybody, here's James the Preacher. He's He's coming out of the butter and into the frying pan. Ah, ah. I thought no one would ever give me a taste of my own medicine, but I was wrong. Ah. And now I'm here in a frying pan represented by two globs of butter. working very well. 